Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. Shavana Speaks More is a portrait of resilience and grace. As an entrepreneur, speaker, life coach, and corporate master trainer, her goal is to empower women and leaders to become all that they desire. She has broken boundaries, challenged the status quo, and will soon be gracing our television screens with her new show, Limitless Living with Shavana Speaks More on CBS. Welcome, Shavana. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So, you know, I, I know people look at you and where you are at this stage in the game and think it must have been easy. You know, there have been no obstacles that you've overcome, but I know that you certainly have. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what it took to get to where you are? Oh boy, where do I even start with that? So um, you're absolutely right. So a lot of the times, you know, on this journey that we travel, a lot of people see your success and they have no idea what the story is behind that success. So for me, I guess without going too much into my backstory, um, I grew up in a little small country town out here in North Carolina. I grew up with my grandmother. I stayed there until I was about 13 years old. And then I came where I am today in North Carolina to live with my mother. So throughout my childhood, there was a lot of things that I encountered um, that children should not have encountered. Absolutely with no fault to my grandmother, of course, but just things that we encounter growing up as children, you know, such as molestation and living in poverty and things that I really um, had no idea that was happening at the time because we made the best of what we had, right? Because I didn't know any better at the time. So I transitioned and came here to live with my mother and it was almost like that was a turning point for me because I feel like that's kind of where my life took a turn for the worse, um, for better lack of words, where I kind of started getting access to the street life and, you know, alcohol and sex and just all of the things that I feel that as teenagers, a lot of us experience, but I've experienced a lot younger. So I feel like I grew up really quick, um, if that makes sense. So Basically, you know, I traveled that journey. My life took a turn for the worse. And at that point, it was it was almost like I was either going to end up somewhere dead or locked up or, you know, it, it would have been a bad journey for me. I'll say that. So I ended up getting into corporate. I got a background in mortgages. So I started traveling down the corporate journey and and things started to really unfold for me. And then I started to see things from a different light. I started to see possibility. I started to really see another side of life that I had never had access to before. So once I started doing my corporate journey, I got into mortgages. I I literally like raised the ladder really quick in the mortgage industry. And then back in 2013 is where my journey really started because that's when I was laid off from my corporate job at Wells Fargo. I kind of jumped into entrepreneurship head first. (laughs) Again, had no idea what that looked like for me. That was not something that we discussed at the dinner table growing up. So I didn't know what this other side looked like. I just knew I had to figure something out, right? So I jumped in head first, got into entrepreneurship, struggled really bad at first, but then something happened and my career just took off. And then it was like the next year, we were on an up and up. So we started traveling the world. People started asking me to share my story because it just didn't make sense for this little girl from this little country town that had all of these things going on to be where she was. So then I started writing books and people wanted to hear more about how did you do this, right? So that's kind of where the journey began for me. And then right after that, I ended up getting pregnant with my son and I hit a severe hard stop. Like I got really depressed. I started having suicidal thoughts. And it was at that moment that my personal development journey really began. And this is where, this is kind of what led me down the path of where I am today. So I I hear in there kind of a lot of different catalysts, but let's, let's go all the way back for a second. And how did you use the things that happened to you when you were young to fuel you as opposed to stop you? Mm, That's a really good question. So I think for me, I I feel like I've always had that drive to, at the time, to prove something, right? Because at the time, it was a matter of, 
well, you know, someone doesn't want to help me, or if you're not going to, if I ask someone for help about around something, or, you know, at this time, if I needed money or whatever, and people didn't want to help me, I felt like I was getting a lot of rejection. So that fueled me to say, okay, you know what, you don't want to help me. It's okay. I'm going to figure it out anyway. So that's kind of where it started. And honestly, it's one of those things where I always tell, and especially now when I work with my clients, I always tell them, when I started my journey, it was fueled from problems. It was fueled from challenges. It was being fueled from a place of um, not such a positive place. But now, looking at the things that fuel me, I'm being fueled more from a place of empowerment versus a problem. So at the time, it was the problems that was kind of driving me to say, you know what? Okay, well, I'm in this hardship. So I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to prove that I can make this happen. And for me, I felt like that was the wrong intention. I didn't know that, obviously, back then. I just knew I have to make something happen, right? I have to figure this out. And I figured it out. So now, looking back on that experience, I'm being fueled more from my passion than I am my, um, you know, being fueled more from like the problematic standpoint than, you know, like, okay, now I know I can empower the world. How can I step into that and lean more into that and, and allow that to fuel me versus I feel like I have to struggle before I felt like I had to struggle to get here. That's a whole mindset thing. I, I know we probably don't have a lot of time to get into that, but I was just driven to do more because I had to prove a point. That's kind of what led me to get to that point of just even traveling a spiritual journey in the first place. So do you think that your, your upbringing and your experience, you you mentioned it was a lot of street mentality. Do you think that that actually made you braver and more apt to take risks? Or do you think that didn't really play one way or the other? Yeah, most definitely. It, It definitely did. And one thing that I can take away from that is just in it's almost like in that environment we have to find a way you had to figure things out so I think just having that grit of resilience so to speak that kind of carried oh that's one thing I'm glad that I was able to carry to entrepreneurship because a lot of entrepreneurs get into this journey and they think oh I get I hit one hardship and I'm just going to give up I didn't have that in me. I never had a spirit of giving up in me because I had to figure it out from a young age. Um, And then when I started having children, it was one of those things where I was struggling so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, how are my children going to eat? I have to like have a yard sale. I have to figure this thing out. So I had that determination and that resilience in me from that, I guess that space that I was in. So that's just something that really carried me through when it came to entrepreneurship. So now instead of it being from a negative standpoint, it's like, okay, now I have that on a positive standpoint. So now I can utilize that same drive, that same resilience, that same courage, and that same boldness to really show up in this space more powerfully and more energetic than I would have ever thought I could be or do in in the first place. So do you think all of that is something that if it's not inherent within us that we can learn? Absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that because the thing is, the the beautiful thing about this spiritual experience that we're all traveling is we can always unlearn things just like we can learn new things, right? There's no limitation to where our mind can go. There's no limitation to who we can actually be in this human experience that we all have the beauty pleasure of traveling right now at this time. So absolutely, even if you were someone that, maybe had everything handed to you, or you, maybe you were someone that didn't really struggle as well, or you maybe never been through poverty or, or even know what the street life is like. You absolutely can learn how to step into the more empowered version of yourself and embody that and allow that to carry you through this journey. How much do the people that we surround ourselves with have to do with our success? Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. Like you, you are your relationships. Like seriously, because you have to think about everything is energy. Like th- that's one thing that I'm very adamant about in this in this universal time that we're in right now. Every single thing is energy. So if you are around people that are complaining all the time, that are you know have a really 
mediocre mindset that just don't really want to do anything with their life. They say that you are like the five people that you surround yourself around, right? And I truly have found that to be so true because even on this journey, there are people that I had to let go, you know, and it wasn't in a way like, oh, I can't talk to you anymore. I don't love you anymore. It almost worked itself out because I started elevating at such a high level and a high frequency that it kind of removed itself or they kind of removed themselves from because we just weren't a vibrational match any longer. So I absolutely believe that a hundred percent of the relationships that you're around definitely affects or enhances where you are in your journey or where you can go in your journey. Do you believe that it's a, if you can dream it, you can be it kind of yes. thing? Or do you believe, <laughs> okay. I was just going to say, or do you believe that, you know, I can make anything happen? I don't necessarily. So you believe it's a, if I can dream it, I can be it. I absolutely believe that. And, and you know, what's interesting about that is I want to say this for everyone that's listening today. Anything that we can imagine, we absolutely can be, we can absolutely do. However, where the disconnect happens is a lot of people think, oh, if I just visualize, you know, making a million dollars, it's going to just fall in my lap. There are still things that you have to do in order to make those things happen. So the way that the way that I see it is, okay, if I have this big vision, I know that I didn't get that download for nothing. It didn't just come out of nowhere. So obviously that's a desire that I have somewhere in my heart, somewhere in this energetic space that I live in. I have that desire. Now I have to sit with myself and say, okay, what's next for me? Like, what do I have to, who do I have to become in order to make that dream come true? And that's really what it all boils down to. You don't just have the dream and then imagine something and it's just going to fall in your lap. That's totally not the way it goes. But once you have that desire, you have that dream, you have to become that version of the person that can manifest that. So do you think that we need to become that person first? Or do you think that we become that person as the dream becomes a reality? I think it goes both hand in hand. And what I mean by that is like, let's just say that, for example, where I am today is where I imagine myself to be eight years ago. And I'm a big, I'm a stickler for journaling and just, I'm a a huge visionary. So all of the things that I'm doing now, I saw this eight years ago and I started to embody that version of Shavana then. Meaning, for example, my bank account was like negative $400 plus years ago. So when I would journal, I would journal as if I was already that version of Shavana. So I would say things like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy and grateful to be living in, you know, this beautiful home, meeting with my clients on a daily basis, having mimosas and margaritas and just, you know, having sushi dates with the girls, you know, while everybody's at work. So I already was embodying that energy before I actually became this person. And even though realistically in my life at the time, from what my human brain could see or think, I was negative in my bank account and it just didn't make sense to me. I would begin to surround myself around people that were at that level. So Mm -hmm. I would make, I would put myself in spaces that would make me very uncomfortable. But what that would do for me was it would allow me to embody the energy of what that would feel like to be a six figure earner, to have a very successful business, to do, be on national TV. So I would just intentionally surround myself around that type of energy so that I could embody that. And what happens is the more that you can embody that version of yourself, the more it will become your reality unintentionally. So instead of you trying to like work really hard towards it, you just become that version of yourself. So I would ask myself, okay, how would six figure Shavanna, how would the six figure version of Shavanna show up today? She's not showing up in sweatpants with her hair all over the place. That's, that's the current version of who I was. How would the six figure version of myself show up? She would show up dressed up. She would have her makeup on. She'll have her nice suit on. She's eating at, you know, the fanciest restaurants. And it's so interesting because even when I tell my clients or I share these stories and things with my clients, I talk to them about the times where when I had a negative bank account, but I would be eating at the Umstead or I would go to like the fanciest restaurant and I would get a salad. I would have my laptop knowing that I couldn't afford it, but it was just something about immersing myself in that energy that made it real for me. So the more that I could do that, 
the more that it was becoming my reality and I didn't even realize it was becoming my reality because I had became that person so much and immersed myself in that, even though my reality looked totally different from what I was manifesting, it manifested quicker, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. it, it took out me, uh, it took out the effort of, oh my gosh, I have to go work 80 hours a week. And, and I'm like, no, I'm not available for that. So when one thing that I I'm curious about, because I think a lot of people would think that in this journey, if, if they have a negative $400 in their bank account and they're doing all of these things to try and manifest it, that imposter syndrome would show up. Did that ever show up for you? Absolutely. Most definitely. Um, I guess for me, it, it was very interesting because even though there was a sense of, so for the record, at this point in my career, I, I no longer subscribe to the belief of the imposter syndrome. I'm just not available for it because mm-hmm. I have such an awareness now of the fact that I create my reality. However, eight years ago, you couldn't, this was like a foreign language to me. But at that time, absolutely, because you have to think about this, like, with me and my background, the way that I grew up, this was, this wasn't something that we talked about. It was, it was almost like another world for me. So anytime I would see, and I think what really shifted the game for me is when I watched the book or I read the book and I watched the movie, The Secret. Once I was aware that there was another way, I was like, hmm, I'm curious about that, right? Let me just try this and see what happens. So that's kind of the space that I was in. So even though my bank account was negative 400, I knew, okay, let me just visualize this. That's when I started doing vision boards and really, you know, and putting myself in that environment and, and implementing these habits and changing my habits on a daily basis. And what would happen is I would hit a block because reality would kick in and say, well, Shavanna, this is not even how you grew up. You know, you you making six figures, what does that look like? Like, you're not even worthy of doing that. So when those thoughts come up, what saved me was the fact that I had, people around me that I had to intentionally surround myself around that would help me elevate my frequency because you can't go through this journey alone like obviously if you're in a space where you have doubt you feel like you're unworthy you feel as though this isn't possible for me I see everyone doing it but it's it's just not possible for me and you're just in that space by yourself you're going to stay in that space so it was so important, and that's why I'm so glad you asked that question earlier about the people you're around. So it was so important for me to surround myself around people that were at a higher level, that thought at a higher level, that operated at a higher level than myself. So when I was in that funk and I knew, like, oh, my gosh, I see this vision. I know that it can happen, but I don't believe that I'm worthy of this. Then I can go around someone that's like, hey, you know, we're going to go to Paris this week for four days and then middle of the week. And it just didn't make sense. But that allowed me to say, man, if, if it's possible for them, I know it's possible for me. Let me keep going. Mm. Does How that make you, sense? It does. How did you find your people? So I started, social media was a huge prospect for me at the time. So obviously I started following people on social media that I felt like had powerful stories that were highly successful. Um, and then I would just kind of like reach out to them and, and build relationships with them. That was one way. The other way was networking. I am a huge networker. So I was like looking up networking events. I was at networking events like every week. Like at the time when I first started my business, I was at a networking event maybe twice a week. I don't know. That's but actually I, how you and I met in the first place. Exactly. Actually, <laughs> like I am totally a huge networker. So I just started putting myself out there. I was like, I can't do this. I'm going to go crazy if I sit in this house and just not get around people. And I think for me, my energy, I, I, my energy bounces off other people's energy. you right. When it comes to even just like, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Right. I'm one of those people. I absolutely love my personal space. Cause I do have to have that sacred space to work and to, you know, get my mind right for my clients and things like that. But on the other side of that, I have to be around people. Like I can't just sit here in this little bubble or I will go crazy. So I started networking. So those are the, I would say the top two ways that I found people that elevated at a higher frequency and that I found people that were beyond where I was at the time, but were where I desired to be. Do you also think, because I know this is one thing that I found along the way is that the, the people that you start off surrounding yourself with may not be the people that you need for the next level or the next yes. level or the next level. And 
I think for me, I think it's very important to keep kind of being open to that next level of, of who you surround yourself with. What do you think about that? Absolutely. agree with that. I think for, um, again, just this journey that we're on, one thing that I'm adamant about is we are all created to evolve. Like when you even look at the universe, the universe expands, evolves every 17 seconds. So as human beings, we are not put here to stay in this little box that we put ourselves in. We are all created to evolve. I feel that our purpose in life evolves as we evolve. Our clients that we work with as we evolve, they evolve. You know, we evolve to a higher level or higher caliber of clients. With that being said, it's almost like, I think I mentioned earlier, like once you are elevating at a, a different frequency, and I know I use the word frequency a lot, but once you, that's just the way the world works. But once you're like elevated at a, another frequency, by nature, it's just law that things that aren't on that level will automatically fall or kind of shift away from you because now you're you're not speaking the same language. And it's not that you're intentionally saying, well, I'm I'm better than you now, or I'm above you now. I can't talk to you anymore. Like I would absolutely never do that. Um, however, what I have found on my personal journey is the more I elevate, so does my circle. The more I elevate, so does the people that I even attract into my circle, right? So now the eight year old and 20 year old version like old meaning eight years ago version of Shavana, the people that I would have attracted into my, and the people that I did attract into my experience are totally different from the people that I'm attracting now. Totally different caliber of people. Um, but again, that comes with me evolving. That comes with how I'm even showing up in the world and who I am being on a consistent daily basis. And, you know, I think you also touched on a, a interesting point too, that people need to realize that this is a journey. And yes. so many people get stuck on, I can't start till everything's perfect. Not realizing that this is a journey and where you are today is never going to be where you are six months from now, a year from now. And so, but go ahead, talk to us a little bit on that. No, it is a journey. And if you would learn, if we, if we would all learn to just embrace the journey, I feel that we would be more, I guess, fulfilled. That's the word I'm looking for. I feel that we would find more fulfillment in life and in what we're doing and who we're being versus feeling like it's such a, you got to hustle or it's such a, you know, like pulling teeth or it's just such a headache. No, this is, this is beautiful that we get to be this. So one, one way that I began to look at that is instead of me having to say, oh, well, I have to create this program. I have to get this many speaking engagements a month to make $100,000, whatever the case may be. I began to shift my perspective and say, wow, I get to do this. I get to show up every day and impact lives. So it becomes more so I get to do this. I get to be this person versus I have to figure this out. I have to hustle hard. I have to, you know, like go out here and work a hundred hours a week because that feels like, pressure that feels like stress that feels like overwhelmed for me so I'm not available for that any longer because I know now we create our reality so even when you just begin to shift your perspective on how you're showing up in the world you begin to see things a little bit differently but more importantly it allows you to actually enjoy this journey you're not the same person you were even last week like that's the whole point we are created to evolve so as we evolve we are on this journey to be more, to become more. And I, I think that's this, such a beautiful thing about this life that we live in today because it's, it's almost like every day you get to wake up and and I play this little game with the universe. Like every day I wake up and I'll be like, hmm, what can I manifest today? Because it's so fun to me now. It's almost like, wow, I get to really create this. I get to wake up every day and be this person. I get to wake up every day and just enjoy the beauties of life and life is so beautiful if you allow yourself <laughs> to see it that way you know we're so caught up in we have to work hard we have to do this we, we have to travel this journey the way that society said that we have to travel this journey and a lot of those things that we've learned even growing up we have to unlearn in order to get to that next level in our journeys because I'm not going to say they were all lies but in a sense it wasn't our truth you know, and that's where all of these limited beliefs and this imposter syndrome and all of these things come from, because our human mind 
it's created to keep us safe. So anything outside of that, anything, if you're stepping into the unknown or if you're, you know, launching new territory, we feel like, oh my gosh, if it doesn't happen overnight, then it's not going to happen for me. And that is, that's not the truth. The point is to enjoy the journey, to embody the version of yourself that you desire to be and just enjoy the moments getting there because everything's always working out for you. Everything's always unfolding the way that it's supposed to based on your level of belief that you currently have, right? And as you travel the journey, obviously that's going to increase and then you're going to manifest more into your life, more into your experience. And you're gonna look back and be like, wow, this this really is a journey, but it's a beautiful journey if you allow yourself to see it that way. Let me ask you this. How do you balance the story of the Shavana that was and using that to help inspire other people with the Shavana that is now? The biggest thing for me, that's a really good question. The biggest thing for me, I think, is speaking to the more empowered version of Shavana and the person that I'm called to serve, meaning When I started sharing my story eight, 10 years ago, I was sharing it from a victim standpoint because I wanted people to feel sorry for me. Like, oh my gosh, you know, this is how I grew up. What am I going to do with my life? Now I am sharing that to give people hope. I am sharing it to say, you know what? If I can do this, you can do this. If I can do this, anybody can do this. Trust me. So now it's coming from a more empowered place versus a victim mindset, if that makes sense. So it's two totally different audiences, two totally different energies, and it it allows you to now attract a level of human beings and clients that are looking to actually shift and operate as the more empowered version of themselves versus that person that's saying, well, you know, um, I'm in poverty now and, and I like it here. You know, I just want to go be on welfare and, yeah, you know, I love, I enjoy this. Like we're not available for that. Right. So at that version of Shavana, it was coming from a victim mindset. That's just the God honest truth right now. It's a more empowered version. I'm sharing it from a place of hope, of joy, of love, of showing you what's possible so that you can elevate your level and operate as the highest version of yourself. Love it. Um, talk to us a little bit about your upcoming TV show. Oh my gosh. So this show literally just fell in my lap. Um, and again, and this is why it didn't just fall in your lap. (laughs) I promise you, because it's like, I literally, I was just telling someone this story about two weeks ago. Cause she was like, how did it happen? And I said, I was literally sitting home one day on a Sunday watching TV. And I don't usually do business on the weekends. Um, and I got a call from a friend. I've already kind of dealt with this friend in the media aspect or the media realm previously. However, it was never on this level. And he just said, hey, I have an opportunity for you. I know that you were, you know, looking to do a TV show a few years ago. If that's still a pop, you know, if that's still like one of your desires, boom, here it is. And I was like, "Um, sure. Like at the time I had absolutely nothing together. I just knew that I was called to do something more. I knew that eventually whatever platform I would end up on, I would be able to make a massive difference in the world. And that that was the desire. It was never really like, oh my gosh, you're gonna be on TV in front of a million people. But that's just how that's how it showed up for me. And that's why I said I said earlier, like even on this journey, if we just begin to enjoy the journey and not necessarily focus on the how, our desires will always unfold. They will always manifest for us. I I knew what I wanted, I set the intention. And this is how it unfolded in my life. So we're now waiting on the date for CBS to see when the show launches, but it's called Limitless Living with Shavana Speaks More. And it's just really a way to bring a more positive light and a positive energy to the world where people can really share their real life stories around the obstacles, the trials, the tribulations, and their stories around how they got to where they are. Because I think a lot of the times people see us as successful women, influencers, celebrities, your average, you know, corporate woman, and they just see the success. They just see where you are. They have no idea that five years ago, you were like in your pillow crying about to like freaking go crazy to get to where you are today. So we are, and I feel that in the media, 
I want to shift the trajectory of what people see when they see women on TV, especially with African-American women. That's just one of the things when people see us, it's always like drama or you have to have, it's entertainment. Like, I don't want to entertain you. I want to impact your life. I want to change the world. Like, that's really the goal here. So to be able to bring a different energy, a different light to the world, to show them like, hey, this is what we can do. This is what's possible in the world when you really have the desire to make an impact versus just being seen. I can get on TV and be seen any day of the week, but the goal for me is to make an impact, a long lasting impact that when that woman that sees me and she's sitting here with her three, four or five children and she's about to give up on life and she sees that show and she says, wow, I can't believe this is where they are and this is where they came from. That gives her hope to live her life limitlessly, to let her know that you are a limitless human being and there's absolutely nothing that's impossible for you. Love it. And I can't wait till the show comes out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited. (laughs) Okay. With that, Shavanna, I just have four final questions for you. First one is what's the best piece of advice you were ever given? Um, the best piece of advice I was ever given. Wow. Um, I would say a mentor of mine told me right around the time I was laid off from Wells Fargo. Um, I remember sitting in a car and I was like crying and boohooing and all of that stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my life? And da, da, da. And he said to me, you are successful. Walk in it. And, it, and it, it didn't really resonate with me until like years later. And I was like, okay, like I'm not successful. I just got laid off from my job. So it just really didn't hit at that time. But when I put an affirmation up on my window in my mirror or my mirror in my bathroom, and I would look at it every single day. And, and as I grew into that person, going back to what you were saying earlier, like, do you become that person? Or are you going to it? It, it goes hand in hand. As I was growing into that person, I would look at the affirmation every day and say, Shannon, you are successful. Walk in it. So that meant for me, it translated to say, own it. Like mm-hmm. you are successful. Even though your bank account is negative, you are successful. Just own it. Walk in it. Right. So love it. Share with us one thing on your bucket list. (sighs) One thing on my bucket list. (laughs) So one of the things I really want to do is a retreat. I want to do a retreat for women in a very exotic place, somewhere like Valley or somewhere, and really have women come in there and have an entire holistic experience um, just from the inside out. And it, I want to cater to the entire woman, like your mind, your body, your soul, everything. And that has been something that I've dreamed of doing now for a few years. So I would definitely say that's one of the things that is on my bucket list to do. When the toy companies finally get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? Definitely a hat because I am such a hat lover, always have been, and more than likely a a very iconic piece of jewelry. (laughs) (laughs) like a necklace. Love it. And last thing, Shavanna, how do people find you? Like on like social social media, uh, website. Sure. So I'm everywhere at Shavanna Speaks More everywhere. Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, and YouTube, which I need to do better at being on, but everywhere at Shavanna Speaks, Shavanna Speaks More. Love it. Thank you so very much for being here. Sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit MarlenaSemenza.com.